Welcome to the official YouTube channel for the Colin Coward Podcast. Go on, hit the subscribe button. There you go, right down there. If you wanna be among the first to hear my weekly takes, NFL, college football, more, right there. I do want to I, I do want to get into the quarterback thing because I I was um I I've said this for several years I think the Raiders have a good roster they just don't have the tight end right they're they're a little bit like Tampa so back to back they go get uh, Brock Bowers Mayer the Notre Dame kid last year um, they've got they the drafted board. the set the center from Oregon right yep yep so what and I was uh, texting with Tom Telesco without divulging too much I said what you should be rooting for is Bryce Young and Will Levis to hit. I said, because then next year, the number of teams that need a quarterback, Giants will probably take a swing. Jets will, but I'm not sure it's in the first round. You'll want to get Aaron some help. But I, I said, you know, if you look at last year's quarterback class and this year's quarterback class, and the, there's not a lot of teams. Okay, Will Levis, my guess, they'll move off him. Maybe. Um, Bryce Young has to buy Thanksgiving and they got him some more pieces, has to do something. I think the Giants will eventually draft somebody. But John, I went through it this morning. Um, also on the on the free agent market, you could have Tua and Dak. Yeah. There's no question. Now I think I think Jerry will re-sign him. But it's interesting with the Raiders. Uh, we, we were, you know, I was going back and forth and I said, what you want to do if you're the Raiders next year, if you're, and they'll probably finish fourth in division based on quarterback and, a, you know, a defensive coach facing offensive coaches. And I was just like, you could win seven games, finish fourth, be an, have an eight pick, just cross your fingers. There may not be more than three teams in the league next year, along with the Raiders that need a quarterback. I think it hit me on Friday because obviously we were all, and I heard your take on, on the Cousins yeah. uh, panic situation with, you know, kind of being an insurance policy. I think if you, everyone got a redo this offseason because when March 15th hits, you know, teams like the Raiders and the Falcons, they didn't make the playoffs. So they have had two and a half months to kind of prepare. Now, the Raiders were hiring some people, say the Falcons too. So there were some moving parts. It wasn't like a seamless transition. I think if you could get a redo, you would do something pretty simple. Christian Wilkins, the Atlanta Falcons, the, the, the Raiders wouldn't sign him. They would assign Kirk Cousins to a $100 million deal instead of instead of the defensive lineman because they have a team full of high-end guys. They have no quarterback. right? And the Falcons would have signed Gardner Minshew or a Sam Darnold for $10 million yeah. and drafted the 24-year-old quarterback who's going to be ready to go and signed the defensive lineman. And listen, I don't blame the Raiders. They kind of got stuck. When you're drafting, yeah. not in the top 10, you don't control everything. Once Penix goes, that's the guy I think that they liked. Maybe they got stuck. But when, when you're in this no-man position, what do you do? You know, Gardner Minshew's not fixing your problems. Gardner Minshew and Sam Darnold fix your problems when you can invest in a young quarterback and give you a little breathing room. But to me, the Raiders, they drafted players that everyone loved. I bet the entire league, you're not going to meet one coach or GM that didn't like Brock Bowers as a high-end right. player, right? Yeah. But what does he do for you when your two quarterbacks are Gardner Minshew and, and O'Connell from Purdue? It, it just, I, and it's no, it's no one's fault. Like, this is kind of who they had. The Cousins thinks maybe he wouldn't have been that interested. Arthur Blank has more cash, so the way he can structure a deal. But I, going back to Atlanta, I, I, you only get so many resources. I remember how he said this in a couple years ago in a press conference. Every team in the league, what makes the NFL different than all these other leagues, everyone has the same resource. We all have the same amount of money and the same around amount of draft picks. You just choose how you use them, right? The reason the, the Browns have no first-round picks, they, they traded for Deshaun Watson, and they allocate a lot of money to him. Well, once you allocate all this money to Cousins, like the Atlanta Falcons did, when you draft a quarterback high, one of his great attributes is the contract, <laughs> Right. So using right. that money to sign Christian Wilkins. Well, right. the quarterback position, only one guy can be on the field. And this guy is not McCarthy or a Drake May, who is a, uh, you know, a, a project, a guy that you want to not force right. on the field. He is, he was probably the most, beside Caleb, like you just want to see him play right away. Right. And, and I think this goes back to, they fell in love with him over the last month. Well, what the hell were you doing six months ago? What well, were yeah. you doing? You would have known at the combine, this is just bad. Like, Part of the draft, the planning goes, if you find Howie Roseman or Veach, they've been planning this shit for six months. 
building yeah. out strategies. It feels like these guys are flying by the seat of their pants. No one would argue, and I'm with you, you're better off having more invested in the quarterback position, right. doubling down. But the resources here are a little funky. And, and Chris Sims had a good tweet. He's like, well, Cousins not going to be ready at OTAs. Who's going to be out there slinging it to all these young guys? It's going to be Penix. So is there going to be a natural gravitation? You know, there's an age gap. All of a sudden, like, why are we playing this old guy? If this young guy, it could get weird and it could get weird fast. Yeah, listen, it, it's, it, it was odd and it's not what I would have done. But, I, but my takeaway is Arthur Blanks get, is in the 80s. He's getting old. Yeah. And his takeaway is we've got some really good young pieces and a great O-line. And my take is you have to be careful about having a strident opinion when there are realistic scenarios that could ensue. Cousins could come back and he wasn't mobile before this. And you could have a guy that's just a ham and egger. Secondly, 66. Which is very quarter, likely, wouldn't you say? Was 50-50 chance, probably. I mean, Aaron Rodgers stopped moving about two years ago. What is he now? He's going to be a pocket quarterback. And the other scenario is 66 quarterbacks played last year. Cousins may get hurt. So I, I almost feel like Ritter was so bad. Desmond Ritter was so bad. There's a sense in the building like, listen, we're not paying any of these young guys yet. We're really not. We're not paying any of them. They're all just kids. Let's just let's just go get Cousins to insure. Because I don't know if they thought when they were do when they signed Cousins, Penix was it's funny. Penix had a roller coaster. Everybody was red hot on him. Then everybody bailed on him. And then we find out after the draft that four teams, including Atlanta, were interested in the first round. So he went from hot to second round prospect to apparently red hot during the draft. So my take is, you know, I I could see Atlanta being like, okay, let's 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 just sign him. We could get him later. And all of a sudden, because I I do know the Seahawks, the Raiders, like teams were interested in him. Like real For teams sure. were interested. I, I got no issue taking him eight. Yes. Zero issue taking him eight. I just think when you plan an organization, that's the GM's job is to think big picture. And I and I understand at the time signing Minshew or signing Darnold, people would have been like, what the hell are you doing? But you should have had a pretty good idea because you've been picking eight for four months now. Like th this, yeah. the spot didn't change. You were going to get that guy. You have the juice to get that guy at eight. And I just think using that amount of money, because when you give that amount of guaranteed, and we saw with Russell, who was bigger, it does stick on your cap for several years. Yeah. And that's a position where you can't use them both. Like sometimes if you miss on an O lineman or a D lineman, you can rotate guys or wide receivers. I just think you're so dependent. And Cousins, what happens immediately? His agents, and I like Mike McCartney, but he immediately comes out like we're blown away. I saw Colt McCoy say, you know, Cousins is pretty sensitive. So you get in the, when you get in the sensitive business, and it's not like he doesn't have the, the equity of the, in the league, like a Brady or a Rogers where it's like, whatever, we're getting this all time. Great player. There are a lot of people are like, he's good, but how good? Yeah. yeah. I, I just think the locker room dynamics and Belichick was always great at this. It's already weird. It, it's already going to be weird, especially when you factor in OTAs are going to start in the next month. And Penix is going to be out there because the other guys in the training room getting, getting ready, hopefully for training camp. So, I mean, I, fundamentally I get like investing in the quarterback position goes back to, Bill Walsh and Ron Wolf, totally. But when you factor in the amount of money, it does just limit your ability. And this is not the other thing with Penix is even maybe more than Caleb. Like he's just a plug and play guy. He's 25, you're 24, 25 years old. Like, yeah. what the hell? Like, this is not a Jordan Love situation. And I think that's where a lot of people, the media can say whatever, but the, like the league's pushing back because it's just like, uh, it's a very bizarre situation. I think it does reflect the organization who's like, oh, yeah, Belichick. We're too good for Belichick. It's like, who the fuck are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I listen, I, 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 you know, mean, at times I called it illogical. And on its surface, you know, my take was Friday is listen, is this I think it's financially illogical more than football illogical. Right. Like, I, I'm, I'm just, this is the worst division in football. I think they have the best quarterback and maybe the best backup in the league. I'm like, it, make mistakes at that position. Just go for it. I, I'm okay with it. But it, but it, and it also, what's interesting, I would have much more of a problem because I think they paid, what did they pay Cousins? 140? Was it like 140? Yeah, I think, I think the the fake number was closer to 180, but they gave him 100 true guaranteed money and like basically $70 million over the next 18 months. 
Right. Yeah. So it's very front loaded. What worries me is that Dak and Tua with their current teams will want double that. So I always feel look, with Cousins, my takeaway is it's all front loaded. If Thanksgiving of the second year you're done with him, you're fine. Dak wants a five year deal. And it's like paying 350 for Dak is literally oh, ends. I'm with you there. I'd rather give Cousins 100 than Dak 250. That's what, I'll tell you. Yeah. 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 So of all the bad things you can do, I can live with a year and a half of Cousins on the field competing. I can live with that. 